Come and be part of this special meeting. Sunday at 10 a.m. at the Rainbow Theatre, 232 Seven Sisters Road, or at your local UCKG Help Centre now. Why am I showing this video to you? It's all about the Israelites in Egypt suffering under the oppression of Pharaoh, being enslaved by Pharaoh. Why am I showing this video to you? Because I really hope you saw your very self in the video. I really hope you saw your very self there. Because the thing that we have freedom, we are living under democracy and we can do whatever we want. We have free speech, free expression. It's not true. It's just a makeup of a different kind of slavery that has been imposed on many. They are being enslaved by their problems, being enslaved by uh, situations that don't go away. They remain in people's lives for many years. They live their entire lives, they die, and they could not get rid of of those situations. And perhaps that's your case. You claim to be free, but you are not free indeed. You are a slave of something that is there in your life for a long time. Addictions, as I said, sicknesses, failures, depression, etc., etc., etc. So, you have a kind of situation in your life that doesn't go away. We are finishing 2016. We are one month away from the end of this year. We are about to enter into a new year. And then, how is your life? Remains the same. You are a slave of that situation that you end up bringing into the new year every new year. So it's not life. And that situation you saw, of course, it's a movie, but it was lasting for 400 years. In 30 years. According to the biblical patterns, uh, a generation would be uh, classified as a 70 years period of time. So, you can see that six generations, six generations, under that oppression, the children being born slave, they never really had any chance to do what they wanted. They had to submit themselves to the Egyptians. And according to the new the new idea of that length of time that composes a generation. Nowadays, they say that a generation uh, is a length of time much shorter, 25 years. So it's nearly 16 generations suffering under that oppression. Why did it take so long why did it take so long for the people of Israel to do what they did in order to call the attention of God? We all know that they cried out to God. What is it to cry out, Bishop? To cry out is not a prayer. 
To cry out is an expression of pain, of sorrow, of revolt. We are today here to lead you into this power, so-called enough power. And they came to that point when they said, we have had enough pain, enough humiliation. It's time for God to do something for us. As he promised to our forefathers. They, they all learned about the wonderful promises that God made to Abraham. Then added some to Isaac. Then some of the promises were added to Jacob. They knew about that. The info about those promises was being passed to all the generations. But then, what happened? That they didn't react upon that oppression for such a long time. Again, when we talk about religion, we talk about something evil. Although the meaning of the word religion is a good one. Uh, speaking in a very modern way for you to understand, religion means to relink the creation to the creator. It's a beautiful meaning. But religion, instead of relinking or showing a way for men to return to God, it is killing our faith. It's killing our faith. Why? Because if you suffer, you suffer because it is your karma. You suffer because God is teaching you a lesson. You suffer because it is God's will. Why? No explanation. So you have to suffer with resignation. You have to really swallow your suffering, your pain, out of resignation. You have to be complacent with your situation. This is religion. This is religion. And I'm not, I'm not here to preach religion. I'm here to speak the truth to you. Listen, one day, one day, Joseph spoke to his brothers. You can found, sorry, you can find it in, in Genesis. I found it in Genesis chapter 50, verses 24 and 25. It says, I am about to die. Joseph was about to die. God will surely come to you and bring you out of this land to the land of which he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Then Joseph made the sons of Israel swear, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones from here. So the info that they received from Joseph was that God would come and visit them. Which never happened. That's a wrong information. They suffered so long because they, they got a wrong information about God. God will visit you. So many people feel like God will come to me in times of trouble and he will do something for me. No, it doesn't work like this. It doesn't work like this. Zechariah, one of the prophets of God, stated, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Return to me and I will return to you 
says the Lord of hosts. You can find in Zechariah chapter 1 verse 3. So return to me and I will return to you. Then Malachi, another prophet, in chapter 3 verse 7, he says also openly, Return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. My friend, the idea that God will visit you one day and change your life is false. It's not true. The first step belongs to you. It's a partnership. God will not do anything for you unless we start to do something for yourself. You see, they were suffering and God saw. He saw, he was aware of their suffering. God was not enjoying to see his people suffering. But as God stated to Moses, there in Mount Sinai, he said, I have seen the affliction of my people. And finally, I have heard their cry out. Then I came down. Then I came down to help my people. So that religious mentality, ah, I have to wait for the Lord. Wait for the Lord. The battle belongs to God. The battle belongs to God. The battle is yours. It doesn't belong to God. The battle belongs to you. The battle belongs to me. My battles are mine. They don't belong to the Lord. What I can do is, I, 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 I trust in the Lord. I will fight in that battle. I will do my part. And I will cry out to God saying, God, come and help me. Fight together with me. Then God will come to fight together with me. But God will not come to, he will not visit me and then he will fight for me. He will not come just because I'm fighting and he will fight for me. I have to really be fighting and cry out to him and say, Lord, come and fight with me, not for me. That's why we have so many frustrated Christians, Christians who don't feel like going to church anymore because they had this religious mentality. So how can I, Bishop, express my, my delusions, my frustrations, my, my pain, my... Uh, My sufferings, how can I? Hmm. For example, when you feel pain, the women here, especially the mothers, uh, when you had the birth pain, how was that? How was that? Did you enjoy? How, how, how was that? When you felt the pain, how was that? Were you giving birth to your baby? Laughing. <laughs> My baby. <laughs> was, was that like this? Huh? How was that? Groanings. Yes or no? Who even screamed? Bishop, I screamed when I, I was giving birth to my to my children. Wave your hand like this. Don't, 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 don't be shy. Don't be shy. Wave your hand like this. Listen to me. If I was supposed to, to give birth to, to children, I'm telling you, my wife wouldn't have any. <laughs> Praise God, this task was given to, to the women because I hate pain. I hate pain. And no, no. We won't have children. Huh? So when you feel pain, you express the pain somehow. Huh? You scream. Huh? Huh? Ah! 
because you're feeling pain. When you are happy, extremely happy, you express happiness. How? How? Laughter. You start to laugh. Amen? Amen? And that's what you are invited to do with us. Amen? Let's express ourselves. Let's cry out to God. And God will come down. And he will help you. Amen? Stand up, please, all of you. Come and be part of this special meeting. Sunday at 10 a.m. at the Rainbow Theatre, 232 Seven Sisters Road, or at your local UCKG Help Centre now.